Hello and welcome to this workshop series of video lessons that I am embarking upon today. I just want to say, you know, that I choose to orient these video lessons to beginners because, as I've said so many times, there is this plethora of stuff up there on the internet which seems mostly targeted to players who are already up and running, whereas much of the material for beginning musicians that's up there seems to be written, I am told, and also from some observations of mine, it seems to be written in a way that is um, not so easily understood by rookies. <laughs> so I try to address this anomaly and post these video lessons with raw beginners, rank beginners in mind. You know, wannabes who <laughs> Sorry, but I, I, these, these, these words just make me laugh. You know, um, want to be musicians who are just starting out and putting their feet on the path. A lot of uh, you beginning musicians are discovering the information that I have been posting up here. But I am constantly being asked if I would please go through it again and lay out even more basically, more simplistically. Hello! I thought I did that the first time. Anyhow, I am always happy to help in any way I can. So in this series, I'm going to I'm going to go, go forward in baby steps and in short clips and I'll try to put everything in the video and avoid as much as possible having to expand things further by putting stuff in the sidebar notes. I'm going to respond to the questions you send me and I thank you for writing. Here are some of the typical questions and requests that I get. Please do a demonstration using the pentatonic minor scale and the blues scale. Could you do an improvisation illustrating the call and response principle a bit more thoroughly? If possible, could you suggest some exercises that will help me play my guitar a bit better? Can you share some tips about how to compose nice melodies when I am improvising? And so on. Well, we'll get to these and other questions that you ask by the by. I just again want to reiterate what I have been saying all along and that is that what I am giving you here is just basic music theory, if I might use that word. It is um, information that is applicable to any instrument you're playing, whether it be a, you know, a keyboard of some sort, a piano, an organ, a vibraphone, whatever, a flute, a clarinet, a palm pipe. You know, whatever your instrument is, and remember, you know, you can improvise on any instrument, of course, you know that already. But what I'm giving you here is just the, uh, let's say, the road map on how to put, you know, put, put things together and work with it. Oh, by the way, this is the humble ochre. A baritone, ukulele, and a tenor guitar are, are similar. The major difference is that a tenor the guitar usually uses steel strings, while uh, 
uh, a baritone ukulele has nylon strings, but both are four-stringed instruments, and both of them are tuned the same way, G, D, B, E, right? Okay. Well, as I just said, I'm going to keep these presentations to short clips, and so I'm going to close off here. I just wanted to, let us say, introduce the series of these, what I'm calling the workshop series that I'm beginning, and kind of give you a brief overview of what I am planning to do. But one thing um, more before I go. A lot of you here are interested in improvis improvising. Most of the mail that I get from, from you students <laughs> all over the world has to do with questions concerning improvising. Well, of course, improvising is, um, in a sense, what could we call it, the end game, perhaps. And it certainly adds a huge dimension to your playing. But there's something that you need to know. In order to, to be able to improvise properly, you have to know where on your instrument are all the notes that you can hear in your ear. Okay? Improvising is about composing new melodies instantly and being able to play them spontaneously. And you're only going to do that, you're only going to be able to do that if you know your instrument backwards and forwards and inside out and upside down and so on and so forth. So what you need to be able to do uh, what I'm suggesting to you is just to spend some time sitting down with your instrument and fooling around with it. You know, just, just, just sit down and play notes, you know, and begin to know where on your instruments are the notes. Where are the notes that you are going to hear in your head? So that when you come when it comes time and you're improvising and, you, and you're thinking and playing, you want to be able to externalize what you're hearing and, and play it on your instrument. Okay, You're only going to be able to do that if you know where on your instrument are the notes, the songs that you hear in your head. So sit down and fool around with your instrument. And the good way is to sing what you want to play. Okay? Compose it in your head, hear it in your head, sing it and play it all spontaneously and simultaneously. Okay? Right. Well, I'm going to leave it there you know, um, for now then, and sign out, and then I'll come back um, following this, and we will get into some work. So, there you have it. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, keep those cards and letters coming. We'll meet again soon. Respect.